interpersonal dynamics, uh, the very important role is of the moods and emotions. And therefore, we are taking this particular session on the moods and emotion in which I will talk about the affect emotions and moods, the functions of emotions, sources of emotions and moods, applications of emotions and moods, frustration, stress, coping strategies for the role stresses will be there. So, whenever we are talking about the affect, so how, how we, do we define the affect? So, affect is defined as a broad range of feelings that people experience, affect can be experienced in the form of emotions or the moods are there. So, therefore, in that case whenever we are getting the affect, it is, it is becoming the broad range of the uh, uh, feeling, feelings are there and this broad range of feelings are, they are the um, emotions and moods. Emotions are caused by the specific event, very brief in duration, seconds or minutes. So, therefore, these are, uh, our emotions are affected by any particular specific event. So, then uh, we will come uh, further and we will talk about the positive effect and the negative effect, uh, the specific uh, and the numerous in nature, many specific emotions such as the anger, fear, sadness, happiness, disgust, surprise. And uh, already I have talked about the happiness and uh, then I will also talk about later on the on anger also in this course. So, therefore, these are the speci specific uh, emotions are there, usually accompanied by the distinct facial expressions are there. So, with the every uh, uh, emotions you will find that our face changes and therefore, easily you can find out that is a person is happy or he is sad and the actions oriented in nature and uh, definitely when the person becomes emotional and in that case he will be having a certain actions. But when we talk about the moods, moods is the cause is often general and unclear last unclear right. So, they are not very clear right. So, because it is a swing game and the last longer than the emotions that is hours or days and therefore, uh, as compared to emotions uh, as we see and that is the emotions are very brief in duration and the second seconds are minutes. But when we talk about the moods, the moods are becoming in the hours or days, and then the moods are more general, two main dimensions are the positive effect and the negative effect. So, there are comprised of the multiple specific emotions are there in that particular period of time, generally not indicated by the no, distinct uh, expressions and uh, if you will find that is the when the moods are there. They are, they are having a particular distinct uh, expression and the cognitive in nature while in case of the emotions we find that is the uh, action oriented in nature is there rather than the cognitive in nature. The functions of emotions are emotions and the rationality. Emotions are critical to rational thought and they help in understanding the world around us. So, therefore, it becomes a very, very important that is the many times that is the our rationality we can understand from whatever, whatever the state of the emotions are there. Evolutionary psychology, the theory that says emotions serve an evolutionary purpose helps in survival of the Jenny people and the theory is not universally however, it has been accepted. Now, here it is a very good uh, picture you will find and the sources of emotions and mood and you can identify that is the how your mood swings. So, here are the days like the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday right and uh, here is the mood that is the low average and high. So, when you go by the blue line that is the positive effect. So, in this more, more positive interactions will likely occur midday and later in the week. Now, you see that is the uh, how it is going the positive effect is going. Positive effect on Sanjay it starts it grows and then from here it is going to the year and then it is going the year on Saturday it is the maximum. This particular from this line you will find that is it is the maximum, maximum say on Saturday you are having the positive effect right here. This black one is the negative effect and when we talk about the negative effect then on Sunday it is very high, negative moods are highest on Sundays and Mondays and fall throughout the week. So, because 
what will happen because on the Sunday there will be the Monday syndrome. Monday syndrome means in that case it is a person thinks that from tomorrow I have to go on the job and therefore he here he is relaxed. So on Saturday you will find the negative is minimum because there is Sunday syndrome. Sunday syndrome is that is a Sunday he will having the no negative movements it will be the positive effect will that will be start in the Saturday because the Sunday effect is there. So, this this positive effect is maximum. So, therefore, at the workplace you will find now that is the how this Sunday to Saturday the negative effect is going low low and the lowest is their negative effect and the positive effect is becoming the highest. So, uh, in this case uh, now uh, you can plot this graph for yourself also that is the which day is, uh, is uh, your the uh, most uh, positive day is there right. So, may not may not be may not be the Saturday right because if you are having the 5 days working <laughs> may be the Friday. So, therefore, in that case it, is, it will vary from individual to individual also. Now, here you will find that is the uh, through this midday right this is also very interesting that is it is not only the day, but it is the in the daytime it is the midday where, where this type of the emotions are demonstrated. It means that whenever we are talking about these emotions uh, source of emotions and moods it is becoming uh, that is the uh, uh, one can find out that is the how his sources of emotions and moods are working. So, whether the weather makes a difference? And here you will find yes, weather makes a difference. How the weather makes a difference? Um, uh, in this literature, there it has been mentioned no impact according to research. Because we, when we talking about the impact of the weather, then in impact of the weather, it is a very for a short period of time. And if uh, you are at the workplace, especially this research is about the workplace, and therefore it is not having the any impact on that. But whenever we are talking about the stress, that is the uh, increase the uh, stress versus moods. So therefore, in that case, if the stress is increased, right, some moods will be there. And you know that is a relationship between the stress and the productivity. So, when you are increasing the stress the productivity will go up. Or performance you can say it will go and when you are uh, again you are increasing the stress. So, this after, uh, from here it will go here. So, therefore, this is the optimum stress is there. So, this is the optimum level of stress. So, up to the certain level of the stress the productivity will increase this is the functional stress this is the positive stress functional stress, but as soon as the, the you will not be having the functional stress and then the stress will be declining. So, therefore, in that case you will find that is the this, this particular uh, the, the uh, 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 stress and the moods are there. So, when, 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 when this is a stress right what will be the mood and mood will be the positive mood right, but when, when the increased stress is there u stress this is called u stress if it is more than u stress and then in that case uh, if the mood is there then, then definitely uh, the mood will be a negative mood will be there. And the for, for the moods then there are the social activities that is the social activities you will find that is the uh, is uh, uh, you will find that is the how uh, these uh, physical social activities informal act social activities and uh, epicurean activities increase the positive mood is there because you are with the group you are uh, having the chit chat uh, sharing the jokes and experiences sharing the problems and solving the problems and therefore, in that case that will be the social activities will be there. And the uh, another important source for the mood is that is the sleep. So, lack of sleep 
if there is a lack of sleep increases negative emotions and impairs decision making process. So, um, what do you mean by the lack of sleep? So, normally the standard sleep uh, normally 6 to 8 hours and if we are having the less than that however, as per the biological age also um, there are the different uh, uh, hours of the sleep is required. Exercise as a mildly enhances positive mood and therefore, yes uh, the exercise also uh, the research talks about it is it increases the mildly enhances positive mood and the gender women show greater emotional expressions experience emotions more intensely and display more frequent expressions of the emotions are there as compared to male and therefore, in that case we will find that is the uh, women are less having the less stress because they are able to express the emotions and sharing the emotions. But while in case of the male, male is not uh, ready to express the emotions and share the emotions and uh, uh, they, then in that case you will find it will be becoming difficult for the uh, ma male uh, to have a positive mood then could be due to the socialization process and uh, we have talked about earlier also that whenever there is a more and more socialization process there will be the better sources are there. Now, we will talk about the applications of emotions and moods motivation promoting positive moods may give a more motivated workforce. Naturally, whenever a person is uh, highly motivated uh, uh, then uh, uh, it is because uh, uh, whenever he is getting the, uh, uh, the any achievement when he gets the achievement or he, he, he is feeling comfortable or he is enjoying uh, uh, his job also, but in that, that time also he will be highly motivated. So, when, when, once there is a happiness, there is a pleasure, there is a joy then definitely whether it is a workplace or in the personal life then definitely the person will be feel more motivated will be there. So, because this joy uh, this happiness, this positive, all positive emotions and moods, they will take the person uh, to the high motivational level. Now, the leadership is concerned, emotions help convey messages more effectively. So, if the leader, if leader is emotionally is stable and then they communicate the proper messages and they the positive messages and encouraging, inspiring messages, uh, encouraging for the performance, then definitely in that case there will be the positive mood and that positive mood will lead to the high leadership is there. Negotiation emotions may impair negotiator performance. So, it, it is very very important. In my previous session I have talked about that bargaining zone that the bargaining zone is required in the negotiation, uh, but during that bargaining zone if the person is not having the positive moods and emotions then the negotiation may fail. So, to have a positive emotions in negotiation uh, uh, successful, you are supposed to have the positive emotions. There are the customer service, customers catch emotions from the employees called emotional contagion and therefore, in that case there, there will be a customer service will be there. Job attitudes, emotions at work get carried home, but rarely carry over to the next day and therefore, that emotions uh, they are carrying uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, if the, there is a positive experience uh, and a positive happenings at the workplace and those positive emotions the person carry uh, at the home, but uh, it is uh, uh, again it is it is time being because next day again uh, he is into the routine. So, therefore, uh, uh, we have to understand it is a periodical also job attitudes are periodicals uh, deviant workplace behavior and therefore, those who feel negative emotions are more likely to engage in deviant behavior at work. So, therefore, in that case the, the employees those who are having the negative emotions are naturally they will have the deviant behavior at, uh, at their workplace. The frustration, uh, frustration is the blocking or slowing down of a goal directed activity it can be caused by 
privation, deprivation and the conflict is there. So, you know, frustration is a negative emotion and uh, therefore, in that case it will be definitely causing uh, this particular um, effect of the negativity. So, um, what is the first, uh, the several goal related factors contribute to frustration as shown in the following formula, frustration is equal to the f can uh, small f into the capital L into the V into O plus I plus P. So, therefore, in that case the f is for the frustration. So, frustration equal to the function of expectations to achieve the goal. Now, this is very very important and uh, uh, one should learn how to keep the realistic expectations, but uh, can we train them? Yes, we can train our mind that is the how we can have the realistic expectation. Uh, how do we determine the realistic expectation? Realistic expectations are determined on the basis of the competency, competency and past experiences and past performance. If we club that then definitely in that case we will be uh, we will be able to find out the expectations to achieve the goal and then 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 uh, the valence v for valence the valence is the attractiveness of the goal uh, now now you see uh, employees are at the workplace for what are they there for the bread and butter are they, that is their dream to do that particular job and therefore in that case it it is a dream it is, it is the way of life they want to spend right it's a very big decision and therefore, if it is a way of life to spend the life uh, in this particular direction for the next 40 years professionally, then definitely that, that goal at this very, very attractive. But just imagine a person is forcefully into that particular profession because he has no any other alternative for his bread and butter and or he is in the very positively into the goal, but later on he forgets about that um, yeah, and he is, does not find the attractiveness about that particular goal. What will happen? Then in that case valence will be low. So, but, but please uh, understand the, the signs between the uh, their expected L in, into V into O, right. O is the opportunity the opportunity to achieve the goal in the near future, if the opportunity to achieve the goal. So, therefore, there should be short term goals, there should be long term goals and if the short term goals are there and then you achieve those goals and then you feel happy and your moods and emotions are good and then you are positive and then you are motivated. But if you will keep the only long term goal, you will stretch yourself and then in that case it will be very difficult that he in that is the, the person will remain happy, maybe he may be under more stress. Mm. If he is under the functional stress that is fine, but the chances may be that is it goes under the uh, dysfunctional stress also. So, therefore, in that case it becomes the opportunity to achieve the goal in the near future uh, that, that, that is becoming uh, the important. Then the I is the investment of efforts and other inputs in the achievement of the goal. Now, here uh, I would also like to relate it that, in, that is the how, how we decide the investment of effort and why some people are they putting very high effort of investment while some people they are having the low efforts of investment. Actually it depends on the goal, achievement of the goal. Now in the case the person feels that is even if I will make the low effort I will achieve the goal then the human tendency may be that is uh, he will not do the very high efforts. However, when you will put the high efforts the quality of the goal will increase. But if the objective is to achieve the goal and there is no qualitative or quantitative parameters for that, then in that case definitely the person will put the maybe, uh, maybe not definitely maybe may put uh, the less efforts right and then as a result of which uh, the goal, uh, goal is achieved, but with the less efforts is there. However, when we are talking about the quality of goals and therefore, the investment of efforts are very high. because the one individual he, he does not only want to achieve the goal, but he wants to achieve a qualitative goal and therefore investment will be there. The public knowledge of the expected achievement, P is about the expected achievement. Now, now appreciation, appreciation by family, recognition by family, right when, when it will be, when there is a public knowledge. So, if you have done a great job, who will say it is a great? the public will say it is a great job you have done, right. So, therefore, in that case the, the job has to be appreciated and recognized as great. 
great job. If the job is not recognized as a great job, then in that case uh, the person will not be having that particular effect. So, therefore, uh, the, the in the case of this stress, it is a life stress, role stress, role stress uh, conflicts and, and then uh, the excess role, uh, role stress leads to burnout. And therefore, in that case, it will be become very, very important that is the how one takes the uh, role, role uh, space conflicts and role, uh, role set conflicts. So, role space conflicts and role stress conflicts are there, then definitely there will be the excess stress and excess stress will lead to the burnout of the personnel. This uh, functional and dysfunctional stress I have mentioned in my first slide in the session only itself. It is the performance is low and high, how it goes and this, this is the distress distress is here and therefore, in that case you will find that is the this, this low, low stress is there and then this stress uh, uh, will be going by the uh, higher stress is there. But as we see the performance will be maximum here and therefore, in that case that is the optimum stress, optimum stress bearing capacity. Now, question arises for an individual where will be the optimum stress? For one person a graph can be like this and the optimum stress will be here. For another person graph can be like this and optimum will be here and third person what has been shown. So, therefore, in that case it will go like this and it will be like this. Right. So, therefore, in that case uh, does the stress bearing capacity be increased? Yes, we can bear the stress, we, uh, 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 we can increase the stress bearing capacity and therefore, in that case it is the uh, very important that is the how we will create the stress bearing capacity. So, in this last slide I would like to take that is how to coping strategies for the role stresses. So, in the role stresses uh, first we have to understand the self role distance that is the how much distance uh, uh, we are having from our self role with the others and then the inter role distance because uh, in, in this can be intrapersonal role and interpersonal roles and in that case how much distance is there. For example, interpersonal role means what I want to do and interpersonal role means what I am actually action is there and there can be the uh, uh, difference. Role stagnation will be there, role stagnation means I find that is now I there is not, not much role beyond this and therefore, I feel that there is a role stagnation is there and then uh, if roles, um, uh, is, uh, then uh, in that case role, role stagnation will be there then the what we have to do role transition. So, in the self role distance uh, uh, the person who is having the dysfunctional what he will role rejection he will, but it is role integration. So, there are the different roles are there then integration will be there. In the inter role distance it is a role partition and a role elimination. So, therefore, in that case it, it, it becomes very important that is the how we are able to do this particular uh, uh, role uh, distance with the role negotiation. So, we, we take the role negotiation that is one role will be having the dominance over the another role role stagnation role fixation is there. So, then definitely in that case we will have the role transition. So, role transition will create that particular positive um, emotions. Role isolation is the role boundness and role linkages is there. So, when as I mentioned there will be the isolation as we have seen into the frustration cycle also. So, dysfunctional strategies will be role boundness that is ok I will do this much only I will not do more than that, but here will be the role linkage the one person will connect his role to the another's role ambiguity is there. Then I find that is the I am not sure which role is better uh, if the dysfunctional is there then the role prescription will be there I will do this I will do that, but in case of the functional strategies there will be the role clarification and then, then they will clear that is what role is to be done role expectation conflict that is the what was the expectation from the role I am not getting that. So, there is a conflict. So, then there will be role taking and role making will be there. So, then one has to take the role and then one has to make the role. Role overload 
So, if there is a overload of the uh, role, then the, the dysfunctional settings will be role reduction while uh, reduction while it will be functional settings will be role slimming. Role slimming is a positive approach. So, therefore, in that case it, it, it will become very important that is the, we are having the role slimming rather than the role reduction is there role erosion is there. So, therefore, role visibility and role enrichment and therefore, if uh, the role is not uh, important. So, therefore, this function will be role visibility while the functional set will be that is the role enrichment. So, if the role is not uh, very clear to others. So, what we will do? We will add the value to that and that value adding is called the role enrichment. Resource inadequacy is there, then the role atrophy will be there. So, therefore, there will be cause while in the case of functional strategies it will be resource generation and resource generation will be resource inadequacy is there. So, therefore, we will be able to develop those resources so that we can make uh, the our role important and the acceptable. Then there will be personal inadequacy in the role stress. If there is a personal inadequacy to do that particular role, the, the dysfunctional strategy will be role shrinkage that I will not do this particular role while the functional strategy will be role linkage. Now, here you will we will find that is the whenever there is a stress and because of the stress uh, there is a disturbance of the moods and emotions and if it is uh, if we adopt these dysfunctional strategies then definitely in that case we will not be having the positive uh, moods and emotions. So, uh, uh, we will not be able to perform in a better way, but when we are having the functional strategies right then definitely in that case you will find that is we are able to cope up with the uh, coping strategies for the stress is there and when we are having the coping strategy for the stress we will have the positive emotions and the moods. So, this is all about the introduction of the emotion and moods and then the one emotion mood we have taken and that is about the uh, what is the uh, uh, coping strategies uh, for the role stresses what is the emotion is there. The further discussion we will carry on into the next session. Thank you.